this is an interesting one because this is about managing the um, managing the options within course sales. Okay, so managing the options within course sales means managing things like um, course categories, uh, managing things like uh, locations, uh, managing uh, roles. These are the things that you can manage within course sales in the options area. It's also where we set up units of competency as, um, as course modules. Um, and this, this gets into a bit of detail about how you can use options. It's almost like a way of showing you what's possible and what you could do. Um, it can be, because it's a, a very important part within course sales, it has a lot of little features that you're probably not aware of um, that you can use. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll get a bit of a, an idea. And there's the background picture of some AFL training going on. The local Quite AFL club. There, is it? Yeah, I think yeah. it was, I think it had been raining and then, yeah, all that sort of steam, steam started to come off the, off the field. Yeah, it was pretty cool. My, nice. uh, my, my daughter plays AFL, so she was probably in the field somewhere there, so. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to what options are. Um, I'm going to tell you um, what's included in options. I'm going to show you the list view and the form text, and that'll that'll become clearer as we get into it. Uh, I'll talk about the tree view um, and the menus. Um, so the tree view um, as a way of looking at the options, and I'm going to talk about the menus as well that come up. Um, and how to zoom into options. This is a great way of being able to drag and drop and move the options around. Um, and then finally, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. Okay, so uh, some of this could be quite useful, I reckon. Mm. Okay, so options are found under the Publish tab and then in the Options button. Um, and when you get the... There are two views. There's the, the List view and the Tree view. And when you look at the List view, you get the following um, uh, sort of actions. So I'll just, uh, let's see if I can use the, um, the screen share toolbar. Where is the toolbar there? Yeah. I should be able to make modifications. To... Hmm. Oh, here we go. Sorry guys, just give me a second while I get up, yep. up these things up. They've disappeared for a moment. Okay, so so the first one on the left there, hopefully you can see that red box I just drew. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's to view the option. Now that's probably not going to be used that much, but if people only have a view access to options, then that's the only icon they're going to see. The next one is the ability to edit. That's a common icon. People, when you look up close, you can tell it's a pencil, but it does look like a rolling pin on occasions. Um, and that gives you the ability to edit that option. This shows you the list view of the option. And this is at the top level, okay? So when we click on that options icon, this is the top level listing of the options that we get to see. So list view, and then there's the tree view. And the tree view is kind of a good name to call it because we refer to these things as branches and nodes and stuff like that. They're a bit technical, but you get the idea. And then finally, on some of the options, we do have the ability to see where these are used. So where do we find this particular option used within the system? And then finally, we've got this ability to inactivate. Now be aware, you can't delete anything from course sales, but you can inactivate it. You can make it so it's effectively hidden um, from your view. In the case of options, they're not hidden, they're always viewable, but they've got a different color to indicate that they are inactive. Ah, those boxes are still there. Let me just erase them. Okay, so here are some of the options that we have. Um, so you might you might be familiar with this when you click on options and you might not be able to see all of these, but some of them. So we've got the branch, um, which is the definition of who is delivering, or who is responsible for communicating with the, um, the students. So often you'll see your emails come from branch. That's where the branch email is defined. Contact types, often we've just got one in there, which is the, um, the student or the customer. 
course categories, these are the names of the courses that you deliver. Um, the course modules define the units of competency that are applicable um, that you're authorized to deliver by train.gov.au. Um, course providers is usually just one of those. That's for a high level license to be able to have multiple course providers within the same course, um, course sales instance. File categories, this is the ability to upload files um, into the system and have different file categories. So you can send, say, file categories could be before course, after course, or they could be for trainers. Um, you can use those different file categories to send off certain files um, attached to emails. Locations, of course, are the locations that you'll be reporting on for Avetmus. Um, note types are if you've got the ability in your license to write notes associated with the records, like on a, it's like a CRM type feature, um, or keeping track of what you've done, then different note types can be created. Qualifications, are, I guess that's obvious. Roles are the roles that get allocated to the users to give them access and permissions to certain parts of course sales. And then you can have these, um, these extension options, and these are options that allow us to create uh, drop-down lists within our forms, or um, check boxes, or radio buttons. Um, these give us a, give us a scale, um, in this instance, um, of different levels of excellent, um, and that allows us to do a feedback form with our own sets of, our own sets of rankings. And then finally, tax rule type. Usually there's just one of those um, associated with... Um, uh, GST free, or you might, if you deliver GST products as well, then maybe you've got a GST one there. Any questions there? Oh, look at that. You've got your hand up. Perfect timing. <laughs> so is that <clears throat> scale extensions, is that only for certain licenses or is that? That's pretty much available for all licenses. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is available for all licenses. I think, I think the lowest level license, which you're not on, but the lowest level license allows you to edit any existing fields, but not add new ones. Um, so um, those people on the base or the basic license, they probably can't create those, but we can create them for, for those, um, okay. those customers if they need it. So yeah, you do have access to be able to create those if you want to. Is that something you think we would use or? Yeah, look, if you're doing feedback forms and you want sort of a ranking of um, what people think of the trainer, the course materials, the venue, etc., then you would create a ranking like that. In fact, some of these are already created as um, internal options. So we've got a yes and no internal option. I think we also do have a scale of excellence internal option as well. So you don't even have to create those um, from scratch. They're actually already in the system. But if you've got something in particular that you want, let's say, for example, you want to have, um, you know, what's the weather like today? Rainy, sunny, overcast, foggy. Then, of course, that would have to be created in there as an option because that's not something that will be in there by default. Well, that's something I think I might look at with you later. Yep, sure. Um, and uh, you can vary these names. So all of these can be edited. So if you don't want to call it locations, if you want to call it um, uh, region, something like that, or, you know, uh, um, you could even standardize it to the, the Vatmas names, which I think is um, uh, training organization delivery location. You can change those names as well. But keeping them the same names as what they are now is pretty useful because then when we go and provide you with support, we'll be able to go straight to the right um, option if we're trying to troubleshoot that. So there's this concept of include a name. So when you edit an option, you'll see here, so I've opened up, in this case, I've opened up the, the superseded option. I'm looking at the tree view for an option. Um, and I've opened up first aid superseded. And see, it's got a little N there. That N represents, um, and I'll use the spotlight here. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Where's the spotlight? There we go. So the little N here, this N means that it's that include in name is checked. Okay, now what does that mean? That means on the right here you'll see how the names of this call of this um, module also include the upper level parent we call it. Okay, so this is the parent option of this option, and it only appears there because I've got include in name ticked. So down the bottom here, you see how I've got first aid current, but I don't have an N beside, this is it actually here, this is first aid current. There's no N beside it. There's no include a name tick, so therefore we don't have 
that first first aid current before this particular unit of competency or this course module. So that's what include and name means. It also means that if you did it on a location, you would include it in the name when you sent out emails as well. So including the option name will include the, um, the parent as well if you have include and name ticked. Yes, Kane's got his hand up, his physical that, hand, that, not his virtual hand. That, I did not I did the digital hand this time. Um, is that like um, when you see in your filter on the left and when you're looking for like a process rule and it says documents dash whatever? Is that like... It's a similar, like it's a, it's a similar, similar concept, concept, but that right. is, um, that's hard coded. But yes, yeah, a similar concept. Yeah, that's right. That's a, just when you showed me that, that's what just sort of made me think of that. So, okay. Yeah. So, so this can be useful because you may want to, for example, mark things superseded and therefore group them as such so that everyone knows that this is instead of adding a suffix or a prefix to the name of the actual option itself. Okay. Okay. So looking at the list view, so that was looking, they actually gave you a bit of a sneak peek into the, the tree view. This is looking at the list view. And so when, when we look at the list view, first of all, we have this filter, which we don't have in the tree view. Okay, so there's this filter available for us to look, look at the parent name, look at the name of the actual option, look at the form or the form text. Now the form text is the text that's contained within any form that's attached to an option. So an option can have a form attached to it. And that's how we get the eventness data into the system. Okay. Now, for in this case, there's no details and no details available, therefore no information on any of these um, on any of these uh, items. Okay, in the list view. So once we add content, once we add text to the, some of these fields, we'll get some form text coming up here. I've just muted you, Pam, just because your dog's a little noisy. If my dog gets noisy, it, oh, we'll have to just put up with it. <laughs> I've got a new spoodle. We've got a dog only just a few weeks ago. It's so cute. It's um, it's a spoodle. Yeah, it's a cross between a cocker spaniel and a poodle. It's basically one of those designer dogs, right? And it's the cutest thing in the world. It's like it's it's YouTube and and Instagram ready, basically. <laughs> That's what my that's what that's what our um, our daughter says. She's just like, oh my god, we've got to take another photo. We've got to take another photo. <laughs> so, <laughs> it almost should have its own Instagram account. I'll tell you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so the list view form text. I want to go into a bit more detail about this because this can be really useful. Um, in particular, it can be useful if you need to do a quick check to see if all of your course modules, um, in particular, have all the right data selected. So what you can do is that because the form text is searchable, um, you can search only values, not the labels. Okay, so uh, what that means is that um, often the text that you see that you select, let's say, for example, here you said, yes, the intention of the program um, is, uh, is uh, a vet, uh, vet education. That's the label, but underneath it, there's a name, uh, there's a, like a, a, a value. And the value in that case is Y, which is going to be difficult to search for, right? So there's just this concept in some fields, such as things like um, check boxes and radio, uh, radio boxes or radio buttons, where the value underlying what you can actually see as the label is what you can search. So um, if you have trouble with that, just let me know and I can um, give you a better, bit of a better description of it. Um, so the form text can be displayed in the list view. So you just see here how this form text is appearing um, underneath the form text heading. And you can actually add whatever text you want or whatever information you want from your, um, from your forms that are attached to your options. So you can add all of them if you want, and they'll all be displayed here in this form text area. And this is really, rather than opening up every single one to check it, you get a big long list of all the information that's contained Within those, um, within those fields. And you can turn this on and off, and that's using the summary checkbox on forms. Okay, so you can choose what fields you want to display by using the summary. Here it goes. Use the summary on the option form to display. Okay, so we'll go into a bit more detail of that shortly. Um, 
but you can see here how you can tick the summary. This is when you're editing a, um, a form. When you're editing a form, you have this option to tick summary, and that allows you to include that information here in this particular area. That's how it helps with options. In fact, I do have, I think I have a, a whole section just specifically on that. I'm doing a, a, a useful tips session tomorrow, and I'll cover summary um, and name and go through all the places that you can find that useful. And I know that's something that, that Kane's very interested in because he's been doing gymnastics, working it out. Is that clear to everybody? Um, it's, it's a bit of a strange concept that if you edit the form, you can affect what appears in the list of the options. Okay, so the list view of the options will be determined by what you do on how you edit the form for, for that particular option. You can choose to display field or field values from that option in the list view. It's the same concept of your... Um, your list of documents. You know how you can display the name? And you can also, if you want, display the phone number, display the organization number, whatever is on the form, the document form, you can display in your form list. It's the same concept there. Uh, which will show, also flows through to things like the registration list, which we did last week, and things like that. So here's the tree view. So there's a bit of terminology here to get to, to grips with. So First of all, a node is one of these option records. So this, this is a node, and this is a node. Um, there's also a branch. This is a sequence of nodes. So this is a branch here. Okay, so the, the branch here is the first aid branch, and because then you've got these four different first aid units of competency coming off that first aid branch. Um, so this is really grouping the courses together. And then there's parent. So the parent represents the node here, that's above these child nodes. And these are, the, these are the nodes underneath the parent, okay? So those are the four, node, branch, parent, and child. That's the, that's the terminology to get to grips with here. And so within a triangle, you open up that triangle and you get to the children underneath that particular parent node. Any questions there? Again, it's an introduction to new terms that you're probably not familiar with. Yeah. I actually did this yesterday. Did you? I did Fun. it with a, a new location when I was trying to figure out how I could have two different venues in one location. And then I worked out if I went just lower again, like, like the tree, I could do it that way. I thought I had to do it all under location, then worked out the system. I can go and do another one under that. Yeah. And I was able to put two venues under location, then I was able to use the location code for displaying privately on a, a specific web page so that my public couldn't see it. Right. Yes, I see. Yeah, very clever. Okay. Yeah, because, because effectively you can move these around wherever you want and it doesn't have an effect on, um, on anything doesn't really have an effect on anything other than what's displayed. It just looks different. So when you see it displayed, it'll look different, but really it has not had any effect on... So your, your courses that you've now got set up on those two sub-locations, you know, those two venue locations, you could now move them anywhere you want and it wouldn't affect the course date. It'll still be linked to that particular location, which is pretty cool. Because if you change your mind later, you can move it around and... and so the one thing I worked out, and I was, I was saying to Annie yesterday, is that when you... Whatever happens, everything's got a number, and that number, whatever you do with it, will get changed across the board. So even if you have a spelling error in somewhere, if you fix it at some point, it will fix everything up. That's right. Yeah, it's all done by the the underlying identifiers yeah. for that particular. Yep, yeah, that's right. Okay, so here's some menus that come up. So this is when you're working in the tree view. So in the tree view, you get this. If you click on one of these cogs, that's how we add more options in. We click on the cog to add more options and we've got the ability to to move them around and add them above and below. So this is the this is the menu that comes up. Okay. This menu here. And you can add before this node. Um, it's going to add between first aid and HLT AOD009. So if you add before this node, 
this one here, this green plus sign, it's going to add just here. If you choose add after this node, because we've clicked on this cog here, it's going to add just below the HLT009. If you click on add a child, we're actually going to make um, a child come underneath the 009, but 009 is going to become a parent. So it's going to have one of those little triangles there, and we'll have to open up to have a look, which is what Kane was talking about having done for his venue locations. And then the where used function, that's a beta feature. It's not applicable to all options. I don't think it's applicable to course modules. I think it's just applicable to uh, roles, I think is where it's applicable. And it seems to work actually only within um, the list view, not the tree view. So I think that's still, a, that's still a beta function that we're still working on. But you have also the ability to actually edit the content that's contained in the 009 by clicking on edit or just viewing it if your permissions only give you view access. I know you've had to deal with that, Joe, haven't you? You've become a bit of a, a tree view course module option guru. Not very good at it still though. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you will, you will gain expertise, I'm sure. Okay, now something that is really helpful, and because we're going to, I'm about to show you how you can drag and drop these options around and what it means to drag and drop them around. But to help you do this, it's very useful to be able to zoom in to the options because it's a lot of fine movement. And um, sometimes even using the mouse is kind of tricky to do. So zooming in um, makes this finer control easier um, and it makes all the menu options larger. So you don't have to be so accurate with um, your, your dropping and dragging or dragging and dropping. Um, so you want to use this, you can easily use your control and mouse, so you hold control down, and you can do that now if you want, hold control when you're looking at your browser, so you can switch to a browser, hold control and use your wheel on your mouse, this little wheel there on your mouse, let's see how I zoom yep. through, you can do that, or you can yeah. go up and you can use this little magnifying glass that you'll often see within browsers to, to zoom in to the page. You may need to refresh the page once you've done that, because refreshing the page will enable you to get a... Um, a more up-to-date um, representation of the of the screen because when you zoom in you might see some of the page disappear off the screen um, it looks a bit strange ah, so you learn something new every day yeah. that, eh? <clears throat> that was one of the annoying things that i've had sometimes i've zoomed in and then i go where's my where's my <laughs> scroll bar at the bottom i can't find it now i know how to do it <laughs> Yeah, you just have to refresh the page, and that's just yeah. Control F5 or F5. That's a way of refreshing it. Okay, so here's an animation showing you what you can do. So hopefully that animation is coming through, okay? Yep. So it just plays for a few seconds. So you can see I've created a first. A first aid superseded, and I'm going to drag. I'm dragging and dropping these items. See, that one didn't work, so I've got to drag and drop it again. There we go. You see, I'm waiting until it becomes an arrow with a long line. You've actually got to get the actual on the line, don't you? As yeah, you go above it or below it or drop to the that's right. Yeah, it, it yeah. can be a bit tricky, right? It so... is, yeah. That's where the zooming option is good. Is, yeah, it does help, doesn't it? <clears throat> and so you can move them around, and, and moving them around doesn't have any effect on these, okay? So you can move them around again and again. You can see now, see, I can't drag and drop into trash. It won't op automatically open it, so I open it up, and then I drag it in. Yeah. So now they're all nice and tidy. So here we go, we're starting again. So I've added before this node. Just play this through once more. Add superseded. Now I'm adding after this node. So this is just a way of tidying all of these um, these course modules. I think they are up. You can see I create the child first, and then I can drag them in. And that didn't work, you see. So I have to open it up, mm -hmm. and I'll drag it again. And it's almost where the little arrow on the left is as well tells you where you're about to drop it. Put that in the wrong place, so I've got to drag it back down. 
See, I create the child first, and then I drag them underneath. So you can change the order without into any issue. There we go. I want to get rid of that first aid and drag it into the trash, but I can't drag it in. I have to open up the trash first, and then I drag first aid in yeah. just to keep it tidy. So here's an example of creating a child, which we just saw us do. Okay, so you see the dragon. So I'm dragging that one by by grabbing onto this cog. So I click on the, I hold my mouse on the cog and I drag it down. And then as I put it over first day, it changes to a little tick, which is great. And also there's an arrow there, and it converts. It shows me that I'm going to have a little arrow there it indicates it's going to become a child of of first stage superseded. So HLT. Uh, HLT AID 001 is going to become a child of first aid superseded. Okay. But it's it's not possible. Um, let's have a look. Not possible that the child exists. So you can't drag in and create a child of it. Okay. Because there's already a child there, so I can't create a child on a on an on a parent when there's already a child there. I've got to drag it in in between one of these. So if you get a little cross, doesn't mean that no smoking. It means no, you can't do that. Yes, Kane, you have your hand up, waiting patiently. I do, I do. Sorry, I noticed this before you had a trash box, and I assume that I think you said it before that when you make them inactive on these options view they don't actually disappear from view is that right like they're always on the screen so you've made a trash box so that you can yeah it up. it's just about tidying right? things up yeah it's just and so i've made the trash inactive to very clearly show it's inactive but i had to hadn't actually make the internal things inactive and i i don't like making things inactive unless i really have to and this is just for appearances so um i just want to to take it out of sight, but I may need to report on those units. Oh, I don't know for sure, you see. So I'm going to leave them as active. Again, it doesn't matter where they are. They'll still get reported on if they are active themselves. Right. And so I'm just putting them in there to keep it tidy. Scott, can I just sure. ask a quick question? Sure. Please? Go away. Um, Go for it. The other day when we did the course categories and um, created 2021 and put all the superseded um units into there you can basically do you can do the same for modules too then yes yeah can just yep. sort of out of sight out of mind and just use this use the uh, new units yep on yep. view yeah okay great yep you can do okay so finally um uh, moving a node so you can actually um you can actually move, well, actually what we were doing before, we grabbed onto this little cog, dragged it down. You see how there's a long line there with the green and the little tick? That means that it's going to, going to drag underneath the HLT AID001. So it's indicated it's going to be in the same branch as first aid superseded, and it's going to be just there, which is just what you want, right? So. Yeah. And you can actually move an entire branch. So you can grab this here which includes all of the, the child options here, and drag it down to become a child of first aid in this instance. So a node can become a child, can't it? And and the, yeah, that's right. Yeah, a, a parent node can become a child, yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so something, so a node could be a parent and a child at the same time. And then I've just talked about moving branches into trash to keep them tidy. Okay, so here's some tips and tricks. It doesn't matter where things are, they can still be used. I moving won't break the connections. I think we've mentioned that before. You can't delete anything, but you can inactivate them. Okay, you can also, though, rename them. And this is where you've got to be careful. If you rename something, then it's going to be very confusing working out what is what was it beforehand. So this is why if you do have access to notes, add a note to say what you're doing, particularly if you're going to rename something. Add a note and say, renaming this um, node, uh, this, yeah, this node because blah, 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 whatever it happens to be. 
okay? And you can, you can do that, um, maybe not within that tree view, but you can do it within the list view. So it's a little bit of an effort. You have to go and edit it, and then, or you can edit it within the within the um, within the tr within the list view rather than the tree view, and that would be fine. Uh, changes lost. Um, are your permissions correct? So sometimes I have instances where people make changes, but making the changes doesn't actually lead to a saved change. And I found that it's actually to do with permissions, and permissions aren't quite right. Seems like it's working, but it's actually not saving. Um, and there's a little bit of a quirk, and that is, it seems like the first child, top level child, can't be dragged into the child of an option. I don't know why that is. Um, so you have to drag it down first, and then into um, an option. Just something weird I found, that if you try and do it and it doesn't work, try dragging it down, then moving it somewhere else. Um, it might be useful. Okay, here we go, the quiz. Everyone's... Joe's excited. <laughs> Quiz is coming along. I just let you know I lost half. I lost half of what you were talking about before my mic. My your headphones. Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've already got a good excuse. That's good. Yeah. Are you? I reckon you definitely need a new headset. You should get a new headset. <laughs> it's okay. Like of knowing how to use it. <laughs> so, what is this? Cause my jaw no. Oh, I guess you already got the answers on there. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. How's that? You give you give the answers straight away. <clears throat> I think I I think I haven't set up the um, the animations uh, the automations on the slide correctly. But um, but yeah. So this is a node and a child. Okay, so um, it's a node of the parent, but it's also a child of the parent. So. Oh. These are all going to show you the answers. How's that? You're all going to get 100%. Oh, great. 100% <laughs> without doing anything. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's because I copied this in um, afterwards and it's it's gone and just gone straight. There anyway, that's fine. Okay. What is this? So it's, yeah, it's a node and a parent. Okay, so that's very clear. Okay. Okay, this one here, this is a branch. As you're aware by looking at that. Okay, well, this doesn't show you the answer. That's cool. So what will happen when the option is dragged here? So see this this option, this 009, it's being dragged. What's going to happen? What does this mean? What does the, uh, this, this representation mean? Hey. He's going to move between the 001 and 12? Yeah. Oh, sorry, 11 and 12? Or yeah. is it going to become a child of 11? Oh, the, the a child of it then, I think. Yeah, it becomes a child of eleven, doesn't it? <laughs> it does indeed. So that yeah. short, that little green arrow there, and the tick means it's going to be successful, and this means it's going to become a child. Remember, the mm. long arrow means it's going to be moved in between two records on the options. So when you're doing this, you can do this to your locations, you can do this to your course modules, you can do this to your course categories, even your roles, like everything. You can, even if you just add, for those items that you're not using anymore, you could just create a trash icon and then move them into the trash icon. So it's all about what grouping makes sense for your course modules, qualifications, etc. You might say current and superseded, or some people, if they have lots of changes, like in the case of first aid, I think that was the first change in about 12 years. But if, you're, if you've got a particular um, sets of units of competency that seem to be changing every six months or so, or you know, a year or two years or something, you might actually want to create um, a node that actually represents that unit. And the unit ID isn't going to change, but definitely the, uh, well, the unit ID is actually going to change. But maybe the name of it's not going to change, but the unit IDs do change. And so you can keep yeah. them underneath it for one particular unit. Um, and um, you might want to experiment with include a name. So useful places with include a name are if you want to distinguish very clearly between some units and others, such as superseded and current. But also you might want to do it for locations, such as having Queensland, uh, Brisbane. 
not that there's many Brisbane's anywhere else in Australia, but you know, you might want to be able to do that. Um, north side versus south side, um, that sort of thing. Scott, you don't have any slides or whatever to show what the effects are um, in the, in the um, formats list for in, this, in the, yeah, include a name. You yep. don't have any slides already made up to show the effects, the effect I, once you check in formats or well, let select me, it. Yeah. Let me, you, when you, you mean, you mean when you do the include a name, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that last part of it, yeah, where it says advanced do um, the effect. It's, well, let me I'll, let me show you. I'll let get myself lost, I'm sure, if I... Um, that's okay. Let's go into format. Try and check it, yeah. So let's edit this um, this particular format. So you can see here, these are the modules. Yes. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another key command. I'm going to hold on control and click on options, which is going to open a new tab, which is actually yep. one of the tips I give um, tomorrow in the, um, the useful tips session. Bit of a plug there. Um, I'm going to go into course modules. Click on the tree view here. Yeah. Okay, and so for this one here, these are this is my listing of course modules. I'm going to edit this particular one by clicking here on this little cog. And I'm going to click on edit. And now I'm going to click on include a name. And save that. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to go back here and you see the way these say module. I'm going to refresh this. And now you see how it says the diploma of accounting for each one. And then it has the unit of competency. Okay. So it's got the full list there, you see. So if I click on the if I click on that lightning bolt, this this says first save superseded. That's because include a name is included for this particular upper level node. It's not included in the upper level node for the 009. But then it is included in the upper level node for this particular unit here, you see. So I've got the Diploma of Accounting now included above, before each unit of competency here. Okay. So that's the effect there. The other one we could do, just to show you, is when we go into, I'll go back to Options. I'm going to click on the Tree View again for Course Category. So this is where I've got all the course categories. I'm going to go back here to this other tab just to show you where this is being displayed. If I go here to say dates, but I don't know if they'll all come up. Oh yes, I do. So here we go. We've got all of the course categories displayed here, and they're all yeah. just in. They're all just at one level, right? Yeah. But what if we wanted to indent them to make it clear? So some organisations have literally hundreds of different courses. And if you've got hundreds of different courses, then you really want to be able to filter them out easily. Um, so you go back to options, and let's say, for example, I wanted to create, I'm going to add for this node something that says first aid. And then I'm going to do what I did before, which is I'm going to drag this up, make a child, drag this up, put it under there, put it under there, put it under there. So if I now say, if I do not just go back, before I do anything, if I go back, and if I just click on refresh, or I shouldn't even click on refresh, I'm going to click on this lightning bolt, and you can see there's no change really other than I've got this new first aid node, right? Yeah. So there's no real change here. But what happens when I do this? When I open up first aid, I edit it, and then I click on include a name, and save it. If I go back here, and now I click on this lightning bolt, Look at that, it says first aid before all of those. Right. So I can make it look a little bit sexier, so I can edit this one. And I can do this. Save. Let's just see, let's do a few things here, see what, see what looks good. Lightning bolt, there you go. Yep. Um, let's see if I yep. can, I don't know, if, I don't think I can do this. Let's see if I, if I edit this and then inactivate it. Let's have a look now. That's pretty cool. See, I got rid of that top level one because that top level one isn't actually going to be a. Um, it isn't actually a course. I'm never going to have just the first aid course. I'm always going to have a course underneath it, like for called first aid. Yeah. So I've inactivated <clears throat> it, and therefore it's not being displayed. That's a pretty cool thing. I didn't. I wasn't sure if that would work. 
So I'm kind of a bit excited about that, you know. I'm a bit sad, really. I get excited about these sorts of things. Um, so you can see how now we've got this um, ability to have first aid underneath that. So if you've got, if you happen to be running, I mean, not that any of you are, but if you're in, say, Microsoft training courses, if you had Microsoft and then Microsoft Advanced, Microsoft Basic, you could have multiple levels in that. Yeah, and that's, yeah good something you can play around with this. Yeah, so if I look at this, I can add before this Not node, break. and I'll call this CPR, and I'll do this again. Oh, see Daisy. Click on add, and again, I'll add that child, put it there, because these are all CPR, but like different types of CPR. Then I'll open that up, edit, include a name, save, and I'll just for just for thoroughness, I'll just edit that and I'll inactivate it because I don't want that to display. I'm actually going to add that to the slide deck for next time, I think, because it's so cool. There we go. So first aid CPR. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone else? I can do a bit of a demo of how you can make this work. Or try something we don't even know is going to work and see how it goes. And just be aware if you're using um, if you're using the WordPress plugin, these changes will be on the WordPress plugin as well. Okay, so particularly for those course those course categories, they'll be displayed um, on the drop down list of um, of units. Oh, sorry, of um, of course categories. Um, within the WordPress plugin. So customers will see this as well. I do have another question, but it's not a bit different to this, what you're doing now. No worries. Go um, for master, for your published master courses or setup, are you going to have um, a bit of a tutorial on sort of the superseded um, units and how to deal with them in masters, if you get uh, my meaning. So how to create um, new masters for the new courses and then what to do, how to deal with the old masters. Is that what you're thinking? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. We could look at that. Yeah, that's fine. Masters are the other area that um, definitely, it's a lot of work, right? Because creating a master means formats and course descriptions and yeah, all those sorts of things. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. In fact, I do have a video already about that too. So I'm not sure if it covers exactly the same things you're asking. So I'll send that to you. And um, if I can add more to it, then it would be really cool to be able to do a, a, a revived version. Because things do change, right? So Yeah, it's all to do with the first day superseded, you know, um, mm. units. And, of course, you've got a whole big list of the old. Yes. Um, and then another list of the new. <clears throat> so it's what can you do with the old Right, is it, so it's more yeah. about how do you manage them? How do you manage the course The same masters? as like we've done with categories and modules mm. and that sort of creating. Well, in, in that case, um, I'm not sure what happens whether or not you can inactivate a course master and still um, it'll still be reported on. I'm not sure about that. I know that I think if you inactivate them, you can still see them in the list of course dates, but it tells you that course master is inactivated. Yeah, I think um, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess if it's about trying to make them, if it's trying to make these course masters look attractive and therefore be like, not be sort of taking up too much space, it might be as simple as, as putting a prefix on the name to bump it down or arranging the course category to be lower than the others. So... There could be different okay. ways. To, if, I, I get, is that is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to sort of make sense of all the course masters because there's so many of them in there. Yeah, yeah. Just um, if there's a way of sort of making it easy because of the, all the different, you know, the same names, but they've got different unit number unit units under them. Yeah, um, I, I guess you want to make sure you're not. Not accidentally. Well, one of the other options was to inactivate all of those um, 
those course categories and then reactivate them them. them later. It all depends on what's the important thing for you. Because if you're constantly getting customers coming forward and wanting to have certificates sent to them or, or customers who are asking for the old units to be delivered, then you may need to have them as active, right? Yeah. Um, but if it's something you can do just on an ad hoc basis, then maybe that's a better management of them. I'm Make sure they're active re- and do. Remember, we, I inactivated a whole lot of masters and then went to have a look to make sure the students were still there. And I could still, I think we did this to try and see if it would still create like a statement of attainment with the details on there. And it seemed like everything was still there. Mm. Could still search for the name, could still search for the student. Yeah. yeah. So, same thing. Could so, it doesn't affect. What, yeah, it doesn't affect, but I, I'm not 100% on the reporting part, but I was inactivating old course data that we imported like from 2017 mm. and 18. Yeah. So I didn't really need to, I knew I wasn't reporting on any of that, but I could certainly find everything on those students. I just couldn't use the filter to find them. In terms of, I couldn't filter by a course category because I'd already made it inactive. But when I went by a name, they were all there. Does that make sense? Cool. By a document name. Sorry. In the documents, I could find them. Which is the important thing about it too, right? So. Mm. Mm. But I think there does come up a warning when you look at the course dates and they say the course master is inactive. Um, so worthwhile keeping that in mind. Okay. Cool. So, any other questions, or shall I let you get back to your, uh, in some cases, your lunch, I guess? Down in New South Wales, you'll be. I only had one. I saw your file categories, and I couldn't understand. Well, I know you had the four student and stuff. What is file categories? Because I've, for example, I have emails that I have a, an attachment go out on, but if I could do it another way where it's not on, I don't know if that's the way you work or what I've so, done is right. But so, the file cat. What this is. The default file categories is general, but you can create others. So some some of the ones that you might want to create are things like um, before course. Yep. Um, you might want to create after course. Oops, I must have just edited that instead of adding after it. And then I'll show you where you can do this. Um, and you can also include things that are just to a trainer. So if you want to send a trainer the latest course materials, for example, they'll be delivering. I'll just call it trainer for now. Okay, so if you want to upload files and associate to... So the way to be able to send out files to students is... To, there's a few things you have to do. Number one, the files have to be attached to the course master or the course date. Number two, the files have to, well, first of all, the files have to be uploaded into the system. Then you link them to the course master or the course date. But you also have to attach the file category to the um, to the email. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you that. So if I go into a master here, for example. In fact, let's go to a files to see if we've got anything uploaded. Let's We've got a couple of items uploaded here, header and footer. I don't know why they're called header and footer, but never mind. That sounds fine. These are header and footer files. Um, and I'll go to the master. And I will edit this master. And then down the bottom here, I can add files. I've only got two of them, so it's nice and easy. I'm just going to add the header there. So now the header... Is, so this is a, a file that's attached to the the course master, click on apply. I can go in and check to see in the in the um, in the file. In fact I can open it up just here. Click on the little magnifying glass. It tells me what file category and there's none there. Okay, so it's not actually going to be included. So what I need to do is I need to edit that file. So I'm going to go back to publish files, click on edit, and I'm going to give it a file category before course. Make sure it's public and click on save. So now everything's set up to be able to now attach this to an email. Okay, so you can't send files unless they are linked somehow to the course date or the course master. The course master means it's available to all of the course dates. Linking it to the course date means it's only available for that particular course date. So if I go in now to um, email, so go to publish, to content, filter by email, 
I could even use file categories and give them the name of the emails if I want to be able to link them easily. But if, I, if I'm only going to use them once for one email, then it, that kind of will make sense. Linking it, having the name of the file category linked to the name of the email just makes life easier. So if I go to registration, which is an email I'll be sending out, click on the edit button, scroll down here, and I can now add, add a file category. I'm going to choose the file category before course. See, I've done it the other way with add a PDF. Right. Yeah, so you can add a PDF as well. So a PDF is a generated PDF in the system. So the file category now says we're going to add any files that have the category before course that are on the course master or the, um, or the course date. In fact, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I'm wondering actually whether if you, because I'm aware of other situations where if you add to the course date, it overrides what's on the course master. And that could be possible because there could be instances where we want to send a particular file for a particular course date and don't want the course master attached. Let's say hey, we have a default, um, I don't know, let's say, uh, I'm just trying to think of something, maybe a, 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 a promotional item. So we have a generic promotional item, then we have a very specific promotional item for a particular course that we're going to be delivering. And so it would be more advantageous if we could just send the specific one, not also send the generic. So I, I suspect that adding a file or files that are the same as another file at the master will only send the course date files for that particular course category. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'll do another session on this sometime in the future and, and be much more clear about it. But for now, I think that's it. So what I can do now, so I've done that before course, let's go in now to an example um, document. Uh, and if I go into this course, let's just see if this course is, that looks like it's linked to the right course master. Um, and if I choose the step, this is a way of checking to see if it's gonna work. If I click on this little magnifying glass with a plus sign. So I'm editing a document now, a document that's already been sent Okay, but I'm going to have a look and see whether the file is attached. So I click on that little magnifying glass, the plus sign, and look at there, it's got the file. It's got the header file attached to it. So this is a way of confirming that my configuration is correct. My configuration is correct because I've chosen that step. I've chosen a student within that course that is linked to that course master. And look, there's the header file attached. We can even do a little bit of a test now. because so if we go back here, and if I make that footer file also, so sort of going into, I'm going to give that actually the same category before course, apply. Now, this is something else I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, this ability to use the contextualization of the ribbon. I'm editing a document and therefore the ribbon knows what course date I might be interested in. So I'm going to click on that edit link and it's going to take me to the course date of the that the document is registered within. Does that make sense? So clicking on edit will take me to the ah, course date that the you're, document You're in the in. document but you want to edit the course date so yeah. I yeah, because I want to add I want to add the file to the course date. So I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to hold down the control key so it opens another tab. And now I'm editing the course date. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to test to see if I, oh, there we go. Look, we can't even add them. That makes sense then. Okay. So you can only add files to masters, not to course dates. That could be a feature of the future, but for now we aren't able to add files to course dates. That clears up that problem. <laughs> so it means you can have lots of files on a master. And, there are, and, and collections of those files can be attached to an email based on their course category. That gives us the one email to many files connection that allows us to be able to connect more than one file to an email. It also means that it's very flexible because you could have the same email template set up and use it in multiple instances. We're not linking the file directly to the email, we're linking the course category but we're associating the files to the masters of the courses. So it gives us the most flexibility. That was a bit of a side bending, but... Sorry. 
some some uh, hopefully helpful. <laughs>